Hello, it's Robert of Robert's Video Gaming Republic here on October the 1st of 2016. I'm Robert, and uh, we've acquired some new goodies today. Uh, I did state in my uh, previous uh, installment that I was going to be picking up the uh, McFarlane um, uh, Color Tops uh, series of uh, Titanfall 2 collectible figures because... I was under the impression that they were going to be uh, hitting my local GameStop today on the 1st. Well, as it so happens, they don't take deliveries on Saturday. So, that basically left me empty-handed. Um, the delivery will be coming a little bit later this uh, upcoming week. So, we're going to be, uh, yeah, we're going to be a little bit late to the party there with the unboxing, like I intended. However... There was something else that had happened here recently, which, quite honestly, I should have been aware of, but uh, the whole uh, Force Friday event happened yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, in anticipation of all things uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. So Walmart had, uh, you know, put out a uh, big thing of all the related uh, movie merchandise, which I discovered, you know, when I went on up uh, tonight and found that the, their PDQs and all their displays were out. I was like, ooh, what's this? Oh no, it was Force Friday yesterday. And so I decided to uh, treat myself to that, seeing as how I couldn't get the Titanfall stuff. But in any event, um, yep, here's some of the swag I went and acquired. I picked up uh, one of these uh, uh, Star Wars uh, Black Series figures here. This is the... Uh, uh, one droid from the upcoming movie Rogue One, a Star Wars story called K2SO. It's basically an Imperial uh, uh, security droid who the, whom the Rebels had gotten their hands on and reprogrammed to become a spy for them. And he just kind of looked really neat. They had a couple of the other figures there too. They had Jyn or so, um, her one uh, buddy, the one uh, pilot, I forget his, his name escapes me. Um, the, uh, the Black Armored Death Trooper. Um, and a few others, but this is the one that caught my eye primarily. Um, they also have some of these uh, Hot Wheels series, like uh, die-cast uh, vehicles, uh, on display there. And I was hoping, hoping, hoping that they were going to have the B-wing again. Unfortunately, no, that wasn't the case. Uh, there were no B-wings inside there. They had everything else except they had like another reissue of the uh, of the die-cast Millennium Falcon. A-Wing fighter, the X-Wing, the traditional TIE fighter, but also a couple of new ones here, too. The uh, the Rebel U-Wing uh, fighter, which is what I acquired here, this little guy. And I guess they had the Imperial TIE striker, which is sort of a pseudo... Uh, kind of looks like a TIE interceptor light. The wing pattern's a little different. So I picked up a couple of these. This one I got for my Zack here. I got him the the Rebel uh, Y-Wing uh, Fighter Bomber. So I think uh, that almost completes his uh, Rebel uh, Starship uh, collection. I still need to get the like little A-Wing. He's got uh, a little bit of everything except for that. And this is the U-Wing uh, uh, Rebel uh, Fighter. Troop Transport, whatever you want to call it. That's new to the movie uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. So I figure, yeah, it looks pretty neat. I guess I'll pick that on up and throw that on up there with the rest of my uh, Star Wars collectibles. Which, looking at the the clutch of stuff I got up there right now, I think I'm gonna have to really I'm gonna be shifting and doing something in order to make this stuff fit. I'm thinking I may have to put like another tier up above that particular shelf there to accommodate, which that shouldn't be terribly hard. I could get like another cheap little shelving unit just to put on up in there. So, and then in the mail, a nice little surprise, since I went and I renewed my uh, Game Informer uh, Power Ups Reward Card membership, the latest uh, issue of uh, Game Informer magazine there with a neat... Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn cover which stretches all the way across there. It's a pretty neat little little graphic featuring uh, the main character uh, Aoi and a couple of the uh, 
cybernetic dinos that inhabit the uh, the uh, post-apocalyptic uh, techno prehistoric future of the story. So yeah, so no Titanfall figures, but a bevy of Star Wars collectibles. You know, so I guess we'll do like a little unboxing here of uh, old K2SO. That name doesn't exactly roll off the tongue like C-3PO or R2-D2. Hey, it just kind of look neat in sort of like a sort of retro tech sort of sense. I'll probably end up acquiring some of the other ones later on, of course. You know, I mean, I didn't want to completely blow my wad today. It was tempting, I'll tell you what. I mean, there were a couple others. Death Trooper was kind of talking to me, and I was hoping I'd see, like, that, um... Like that, uh... Beachfront Assault Trooper. You know, and, like, sort of like that, you know, tan, uh, sand-colored armor from the trailers there, but... It looked like someone had rummaged through the PDQ a little bit, so I'm thinking some of the more choice and or rare figures probably got pilfered before I got there. More's the pity. But uh, yeah, let's get to let's get to unboxing this guy. Okay. Here we go, Mr. K2SO. The official unboxing of the slide him out of there. And this is how all the other Black Series figures, like uh, the Kylo Ren and the um, First Order Stormtrooper, came similar packaging. I don't think they really have them tied in there with any... doesn't look like they have them tied in with any twist ties or tapes. It's just basically like a, a molded plastic that just kind of holds them into place. Tempting though it may be to just kind of keep them within the plastic just to maintain like his uh, collector's value. I want to display him. Yeah, there are you. Oh boy. Yeah, this stuff is some work. Oh, I got a couple of little bumps in there keeping his head in place. And around his hips, knees, ankles. Oh my god. This guy is in there. Holy crap. Okay, just push him out from the back. There we go. And, oh, out you come. Okay. Yeah. There he is. It, it's a pretty tall figure. Well, based on the uh, the character in the uh, movie, I mean, he's, he's pretty tall. I mean, he stands easily seven foot something. Maybe a bit taller, actually. The joints are... Oh, I see, it's like a little lucite pins. Uh, pretty... Oh, okay, I got some bending at the uh, wrist, a little bit of movement at the wrist. I don't want to... I mean, the plastic's pretty nice. I mean, it's one of the yeah, one of the nicest pieces I've seen from the Black Series. You know, he just kind of keeps his arms down to the side. It kind of, You know what he kind of reminds me of a little bit looking at him? You can see here... Almost reminds me just the look of him. He kind of looks like the Iron Giant a little bit from that old Don Blue animated movie about the kid and the giant alien robot going running amok. He's got that sort of retro tech look to him. Almost reminds me a little bit too of the um, the old Guardian robots from uh, Laputa Castle in the Sky. I think there was some design influence there, I'm sure, on a part of the creators. Detail's really nice. I mean, the the torso pivots there. You can see. I'm going to bring them up a little bit closer to the camera so you can kind of see what's going on here. Head definitely, you know, you gotta you got to hold them here a little bit. You know, the, the head does move a little bit. I mean, there's not much lateral play there. I mean, back and forth, yes. But, like, you know, as far as, like, you know, side to side, no. Arms and legs, the joints are pretty solid. You know. Oh, I just noticed that he's got, like, a little imperial symbol here on the shoulder. Probably for his particular purpose in the Empire. Yeah, it just looks really neat. I just... 
you know, I got an affinity for all things like, you know, giant and robotic. If I, uh, my obsession for Titanfall 2 wasn't an indication to that, you know. So, I might not put him up on the Curio too, too quick. I think I'll keep him down here onto the desk and just kind of display him prominently next to one of the consoles. His feet, they're not especially... Uh, they're kind of small. It looks like he stands just fine. Let me see. Let's move some of this out of the way. We'll die cast things down there. And put him right here on Mr. Desk. Well, standing him on that magazine that's kind of... It's not terribly solid. Put him back here a little bit. Oh, there we go. And he seems to stand just fine. Of course, I get the impression he would fall over rather easily. A lot of these things they tend to on the bottoms of the feet. Yep. You got a couple of little peg holes there, so if you get like a little like little plastic stand that you can just kind of insert the pegs in. You know. I think he'll probably stand better than my uh my first order stormtrooper whom I got was a defective model that came with two left feet. You know, who knew? And I got him standing on his own. As long as a curio isn't bumped, you know, with any sufficient amount of force, he stands just fine. Although, whenever Margaret hops up there, everything just goes straight to hell. So, yeah. I'm glad I got this guy. I'm kind of tempted to pick up Jin or so there, too, but... I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I... I I, I, I suspect I'm going to end up, you know, with a good bevy of these ones here. Here we go. So, not exactly, again, the piece I was looking to pick up today, but I'm not really that disappointed. I'm not really put out. <laughs> you know? So, I guess uh, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story will be coming out um, at or near Christmas time. I think uh, release date was December... 20-something. I want to say 23rd. I could be wrong. Oh, it's pretty neat. Right down here, just below the knee joint, the leg laterally pivots. That's nice. Oh, the arm laterally pivots, too. Just below the, the elbow joint. And above the elbow joint. Oh, man. How many points of articulation do you have, I wonder? I'm going to be playing with you for a while in order to discover. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, well, sort of 23. Uh, let's see. Uh, slight pivoting backwards and forth of the torso. So, I'm going to go out on a limb and say about 25 points of articulation. I could be wrong, but to my observation, that's what uh, old K2SO seems to be capable of doing. Now, I've been rambling on rather nonsensically about this guy now for what's probably going on five minutes, so I think enough of him. So, yeah, that was basically it for today. Um... I did start in earnest here with the uh, with the Halloween mar movie marathon. No one wanted to sit down and watch anything with me today, so I just you know contented myself with a little you know '90s Godzilla action. You know, caught uh, Godzilla vs. Destroyer. That was a good old moldy piece of uh, you know kaiju cheese, which I actually managed to sit through the entirety of. You know. So I think some of those 90, uh, you know, suitmation, you know, Godzillas were actually pretty decent. The suits were pretty well done. So, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. I think hopefully if the weather holds up, we may actually be able to go out and possibly hit a pumpkin patch or find a harvest festival or start doing some costume hunting because now the, the Halloween costume and accessory stores are now up in full force. So, might as well be, make that our big family deal. 
I can't get enough of you. You are just about the cat's rectum. Okay, in any event, that should be it for me. Uh, we'll probably be back here again for the unboxing of the uh, McFarlane Titanfall 2 stuff. I think probably this week the uh, the McFarlane Color Tops um, uh, Jack Cooper uh, Titanfall 2 figure maquette will be in. And then we'll, uh, we'll go and do his reveal. So with that, it's Robert. Robert's Video Gaming Republic, signing off here on October the 1st, 2016. We'll see you later this week.